Just this week in conversation with one of the other staff pastors here um, at the church, that was something that we was conversing about um, in the office of uh, this week. And we were saying, um, you know, when, when times are shifting and when things are changing, um, even when seasons change in your life, God will cause you um, to soar, if you will, um, differently in different stages, whether you're soaring as the eagle or if you're soaring as a dove. And I'm not going to go too much into it because I'm, um, you know, I'm being hopeful that in uh, some of our, uh, one of our upcoming classes this um, this summer, um, there'll be an opportunity for you to hear about the, um, uh, you know, operating as a dove uh, when it comes to your worship. And so um, the sight of a dove is that um, I can say this, sometimes God will allow you to not focus on all of the other. And I'm going to use the word that you used earlier, um, Sister April. Uh, sometimes, it, you know, God will cause you to not, um, you know, you'll know that all these other distractions are going on around you. Mm -hmm. And before where, you know, it usually will get you off course and you will fly over there or try to fly over there because you got so many different distractions going on. But God will give you that eyesight of a dove and say, look, I'm going to need you to focus in on me because mm -hmm. a dove doesn't have any peripheral vision, if you will, only single a singleness when it comes to vision and so sometimes God and I, yeah I didn't know that either when it was being taught to me just this week when it came to that and I was like my God you know so and it, it was having to deal with um you know what one of the worship instructors were saying you know give me that eyesight of a dog that I'm able to go in um you know, when I'm in my worship or when we're in any type of moment, an intimate moment where we're wanting to be in the oneness with God by his spirit, you you know, give me that of a dove where I can just stay single. You know, my, my vision is, is right there with you, God, and I'm not easily distracted and pulled by the obstacles, the obstacles, like you said, of, you know, low self-esteem, the obstacle of um, other people, other people. Mm -hmm. Uh, you know, whatever that obstacle is, um, you know, we want to make sure that those distractions, those things are pushed to the side. One of the, another most common bondage of, of, of the stop of the flow of you operating in your gift is that of fear. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Is, is, is that a fear? Mm -hmm. Again, the fear of the unknown or the fear of not even, you know, of when you, when you must step out. Some people, you know, they, they've had the, um, the you know the, uh, the the benefit of being nurtured as a child, people speaking into their lives, people encouraging them and saying you know and just as Timothy when he had his grandmother you know um, and his aunt to speak into his life and to tell him stir up those gifts, stir up the gifts on the inside of you, um, you know sending them the prayer you know services and things of that nature to help feed them spiritually as they were coming up in the Word of God. Um, you know, I myself, you know, coming from, a, you know, a, a strong family of Christian values and being brought up, um, you know, in the church, I was fortunate enough to have those surround me to speak into my life. And I was having my gift cultivated, if you will, whether it was that of worship or whether it was that because I did not know, um, you know, of my calling of being called to evangelize, to speak the word of God. At that age, I just thought it was about the worship. I thought it was about the gift that I possessed of being able to carry a tune, if you will, mm -hmm. um, you know, and to be able to sing and, 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 you know, and deal in the music ministry. But I didn't know that there was more that was even in, even in operating in that, that was more to be done, um, you know, to that. So I thank God that I was fortunate enough to be one of those. Um, but then... It comes a time when, you know, you, you, you know, you recognize, you know, once you, you know, have that, um, you know, the um, encounter, if you will, with, with Christ or receiving your salvation and, you know, and in your heart, you're saying, God, what am I here on this earth to do? What is my purpose? What am I called to do? And then you go on this, uh, you know, fact finding or searching venture uh, and then, you know, you roll up in a class by discovering your God given gifts or, you know, you at some point, whatever the case may be, but at some point you say, God, what are you calling me to do in the season? But then fear creeps in and say, well, you know, you've never been before um, people to, um, you know, really teach before. And you know, you can carry a tune, but you've never been up on that stage to sing in front of, you know, a body of, um, 
of believers, you know, and you know, of course, the larger the stage, the more intimidating it may be, especially to someone who's never even been on the platform. I struggle with that because. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. It can happen. Yeah. Yeah. It can happen. It's real. And so, um, you know, fear by its nature prevents our developing the full potential of our gifts. That's what fear is sent from the devil, you know, is sent from him to us, to stop us. Again, his assignment, we know, steal, kill, destroy. So if he can destroy, you know what I'm saying, any, any thoughts of you being able to move past, you know, where you are. Of course he wants to, you know, of course he wants to do that. That's number one. That's the first thing that he wants to, um, you know, that's the first thing he wants to do. He does not want you to be able to even develop the thought of you moving further in your life. He wants to steal that joy that we talked about at the beginning, the joy that's a byproduct of you being able to connect to your calling, to your gift. He wants to take that away. And so, um, you know, bondages, things that, you know, happen to us, negative childhood um, experiences or conditions, things that, 